good, everybody? It's your boy, Jolly by Nature, and we are back, bringing you another episode of our Pokemon X Nuzlocke as a part of the Blast Burn Radio Nuzlocke World Tour. I have missed you guys. You probably haven't missed me, unless I missed my guess. It's only been a day or two since you last saw an upload from your boy here on the channel, but it's been well over a week since I recorded my last episode of this Nuzlocke run because, you guys, I, I shit you not, I recorded our last episode and the next day I had to put some time into um, getting our, our our legitimately bred, totally legitimate Pokemon bot uh, back up in the Discord because we're running a draft league right now. We want that to be available to everybody uh, to help out. And in the process, I had to move a bunch of USB stuff around and Banjo, my little sweet puppy, uh, ate my USB controller. <laughs> Um, which shouldn't matter because I'm totally playing right now on a completely legitimate Nintendo 3DS hardware. Uh, but if I were not, for instance, and I needed a controller to in interface and input into this game, then I would have been in a whole world of hurt. Um, but we've got ourselves a, a fancy new USB. We are very excited by it. It's very shiny uh, and we are ready to get moving. Um, but more for my sake than yours, let's just take a moment to review kind of the, the team as it currently exists. Uh, the team as it currently exists consists of ravioli our level 45 shiny gabite with bulldoze home claws area lace and dragon claw we got cheese our new rotom heat with thunderbolt overheat thunder wave and substitute we've got gelato our Audino, shiny Audino with thunderbolt simple beam toxic and protect uh peanut the meow stick with psy shock psychic thunderbolt and fake out uh claude the skun tank with protect toxic Venom shock and flamethrower and baloney the Barrel, uh, Strength Surf, Cut, and Rock Smash. All right. So, yeah, this is the team, at least, that we're bringing into um, the Frost Cavern. Um, I'm actually going to lead with Ravioli for a little bit. Um, I know that that's particularly dangerous in the Frost Cavern of all places, but if my memory of this place serves me well... There's not a ton of ice among the trainer Pokemon, just amongst the wild Pokemon, and we've already gotten our encounter in here, so we don't need to stress the wild Pokemon as long as we have repels, um, and honestly, Ravioli could use the EXP. Um, Ravioli is getting really close to being uh, a big, strong Garchomp girl, and, and we, we particularly love to see that. We definitely want to see it. Uh, we want to actualize that into the world, and yo, look at that. It's a fucking Dewblade. Ravioli, here you go, my girl. A gift from heaven for the shark. Do it, do us a murder, my child. God, do blade so fat. Jesus, fuck. Uh oh. Uh oh. I mean, it's Gen Six. At least body press isn't a thing yet, right? But still, uh oh. Okay, I, I, I really sincerely hope that this thing does not have uh, Shadow Snake. It did not. We're good. We're fine. I'm not sure if Power Trick affects, like, stat boosts. Probably would have been a bad way to find out. Um, thankfully, did not have that priority to just bop our shark. That was actually terrifying. Is Hopefully that's not a portent for things to come, y'all. We've had a real rough week already. We lost Granola. Like, I'm kind of ready for this one to be a snoozer. If I'm being a hundred, but I'm not sure it's going to be. That's one thing I will say. Like, a, a big criticism that X and Y gets is that they are too easy overall as games. And and in large part, like, I, I agree. That has been a large part of my criticism of X and Y throughout this entire series. Um, but I think that... X and Y suffers from the same thing that Heart Gold Soul Silver benefits from. Um, like, because Heart Gold Soul Silver were like horrifyingly easy through 90% of the game. It's just that the boss battles were really tough. And when you're done playing it, the boss battles, like those epic moments, are what you remember. Um, whereas, if anything, X and Y are the opposite. Like, the boss battles tend to be disappointingly easy, but like the game itself has like really difficult moments in sometimes very surprising places. Um, but it's not like a, a format that lends itself well to that. Um, I think maybe I'm just full of shit. It would not in fact be the first time. 
Um, how am I going to deal with this Marowak? Are we just going to Dragon Claw it? Let's Dragon Claw it and see how much we do. It's probably not got a thick club. Okay, yeah. Ravioli should be fine here. Wait, we got to be smart. That last hit did 45 damage. Crits in Gen 6. I am, I am not losing Ravioli the same way that we lost Johnny, y'all. I'm not doing it. Um, crit mechanics, Gen 6. We are playing around the crit. Um, prior to Pokemon X and Y, critical hits increase the damage about to the damage to be given by a further 100, making it 200% of normal. Uh, however, from Pokemon X and Y, the strength of critical hits has been drastically reduced. Instead of doubling, they now do 50% more. Okay, so it just did 45, which means that the crit would do 67, 68. We live, we live the crit here. That is the important part. Which means that we can stay. That's what I thought, but God, if I had assumed that had been wrong, that would have been incredibly frustrating. We live to eat the berry, and we kill the whack. And this is in large part why we switched to Dragon Claw here, right? Because, like, Dragon Rush probably would have been, a two, actually, uh, certainly would have been a two hit KO there. Um, which in some ways, in a lot of ways, would have been a lot better. But also, um, Dragon Rush could have missed. And we would have been in a world of fucking hurt at that point. I guess I could have gone Gelato and Toxic Stealth. Gelato's getting real close to level limit. And, like, it's never happened. I'm not sure how we would treat a Shiny that overlevels. Like, does that mean that that Mon, like does get benched when they can't? Does it mean that I bring one less Mon to PvP because like it's still holding a phantom spot? I don't know and I don't super want to find out. Which means we have to be real easy on Gelato. In any other circumstance, it would mean that Gelato goes in the bank um, and does not come back out. But we don't have that luxury right now. I kinda, I kinda wish we brought Pumpkin Spice in here. Honestly, but we didn't. Do I do I go back out for pumpkin spice right now? Honestly, no. I've also got thunderbolt on uh, on what's his butt on peanut. So I, honestly, I probably should have gone into peanut there. I was just being extremely cautious uh, of the incoming damage. Like that's one really nice thing about having gelato. Is that gelato is just so goddamn fat. Just eats those hits up like they're nothing. Like, again, all in all, not not the shiny I would have wanted. Like, not even not even the best odd no I've ever had. Frankly, Selexa was a, an overall like significantly better Pokemon. Um, God, I should have gone back. God, I should have gone back for pumpkin spice. Oh well, like sometimes it'd be like that. Um, yeah. But, but, like, I have not been entirely displeased with, uh, with our, our good girl, Gelato. Our good boy, excuse me, Gelato. Um, like, has really come in clutch overall. Not the worst shiny I've ever had by a, a, a wide margin. Not the best either, but not the worst. Now, this is where I have to be worried that this Relicanth is now going to outspeed me and is going to bop me with some crazy bullshit. Nope, still outspeed it. Okay. Let's go Rockfish. All right, what's coming out? A Rhydon. Rhydon these nuts. Um, I think I go Baloney. <laughs> I, I brought Baloney in for strength. But really, I need to be using him anyway. Like, he's on... Especially as limited as my team is right now. He's on the team. I need to use him. And, like, this is... This is his moment, right? This is his moment. Fucking A-plus job alone. If you had not killed that Rhydon with quad effective surf, I would have been extremely disappointed in you, my boy. All 
right. What is this way? Let's find out together. Eat this karate chop. Oh no. I'm not sure that I want to eat the karate chop. Oh no, I don't want to eat this karate chop. This this karate chop is a goddamn problem. Oh no. Okay. Okay. Um let's get an aerial ace off and just see how much damage we do. Oh Jesus fuck. Okay. Okay, well this is this is the world we live in, I guess. Um All right, I got to be incredibly strategic here. And if if the AI just predicts me, I just lose. But like I've got to I got to go so hard here. Um we're going to go peanut predicting him to go back into the high jump kick. If he goes crunch, we're in trouble. Dragon tail. Not sure why that wasn't the first move, honestly, but okay. Okay, there's the fart skunk. Let's protect this turn. If he goes for a high jump kick, we're actually suddenly in great positioning. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, I need you to be faster, Claude. You're, you're a very fast skunk. I believe in you. Be faster, finish it off. Let's go. Oh my god. That Scrafty came into this with murder in his fucking heart. Alright, that's a throw. Throw can have guts. I I must not toxic the throw. Um, let's protect and see what movie wants to go for. Bulldoze. Um, that's actually a pretty simple solution. We go out to cheese. And I think we Thunderbolt here. Um, I'm not convinced that Overheat would one-shot or I would click it. Okay, Thunderbolt. Oh, no. Cheese, my boy. Cheese, my boy. Okay. Cheese is fine. Cheese does not live the crit, though. Overheat. Overheat. Finish him up. No! No crit, no crit, no crit, no crit. Oh, Jesus, fuck. Um, okay, okay, okay. I can't really swap here. You gotta land the overheat, bud. Oh, thank God. Kill, 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 kill. Jesus. This bastard was coming for my whole asshole, huh? Oh my God. We almost lost like three mod in that fight. Jesus. Um, the plan before the Scrafty Dragon tailed my skunk out, um, which actually wound up working really well because it gave him a free switch in, which was really what Claude needed to deal in that situation. Um, the plan was to, to switch Peanut into the predicted high jump kick and live it because it's a resisted hit. Um, right, that was that was part one. Um, part two was then to switch into um, Gelato, our Odno, on the predicted dark attack. Um, bulky enough, live that really well, and then protect and try to bait the high jump kick. That was going to be the plan. Um, what actually happened just wound up being straight better, which was good. Because um, it was all very scary. Um, okay, we're going to... I, that Grumpig could have Power Gym. It probably does have Power Gym. We are going to double into the Grumpig. Of course, that Hariyama could easily have Rock Slide. Oh no! Oh no! Why is everything in this cage just choosing murder today? Okay, we're, we're fine. 
barely, I guess. Jesus. We got another, like, battle girl type trainer. Oh no. So far, they have been a big fat problem. Alright, Ravioli, I need you to chomp it up, my, my girl. It's a low sweet. Oh no. Oh no. Oh my god. I'm just getting punished like a motherfucker for not bringing the ghost in here, huh? Okay, that's a mind chow. That is a mind chow. Uh, we're gonna go peanut here. Drain punch. Okay, we'll eat that really well, actually. Uh, reasonable. Kinda well. Um, we're gonna psychic. There we go. Oh, thank fuck. Jesus Christ. This just, like, little hallway of trainers is out for all of my blood. It's frankly a little ridiculous. So I, I guess question of the day, um, when have you been just out and out surprised by the difficulty in Pokemon, positively or negatively? Because um, cause I'm definitely getting a, a big heaping dose of that right the fuck now. I have been very both pleasantly and unpleasantly surprised by how hard this cave is going. Um, so let me know when a Pokemon game has just caught you completely with your pants down with going like balls to the wall hard for your ass uh, down in the comments below. I, I will legitimately read all of those stories. Those are to me like some of the best Pokemon stories. <laughs> so please, please give them. And we get a, that's actually a really good spot for like a Pokemon Center NPC. And like, I know that some people on the subject of difficulty in Pokemon, I know that some people shit on additions like that is just like, oh really, do the games need to get that easy? But, but again, running back to the Pokemon Center was never hard. Never in any Pokemon game was it a hard thing to do to be in the middle of a cave and escape rope out and go to the Pokemon Center and come back. It's just frustrating and tedious. Like, I do see both sides of the argument because the fact that it's frustrating and tedious makes you less likely to want to do it, which makes you more likely to put yourself in riskier situations and blah, 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 blah. But, but at the end of the day, if you're, if you're playing smart and you want to heal, you will either bring plenty of healing items to be able to do so without going back, or you will go back. Um, I would argue that if you are the type of person who is... Oh no! Oh no, baloney! No, my baloney! Oh no! My sweet and perfect HM slave friend! Alright, come on, Peanut. God, this is terrifying. I could have faked out. That was that was straight up a misplay. If it blows up in my face and Peanut goes down here, that is entirely my fault. Okay, it did not blow up. Thank fuck. I cannot tilt. Cannot tilt.
Baloney, you are the best goddamn HM slave a man could ask for. Godspeed, my boy. Okay, we see a car bank, which is very specially defensive, so we're gonna side shot. Maybe it's also very physically defensive. I thought its defenses went the other way. But maybe I was just straight wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. Alright, let's try Psychic and see if that does more damage. Yeah, I was I was mistaken. Time, y'all. We lost a baloney, but in the mix, we're gonna get the street shark. Street shark, shark in the streets. Watch out, it's a shark in the streets. Hello, ravioli. Ravioli wants to learn Crunch. Do we want to learn Crunch? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Over the current options, certainly. Yeah, we'll learn Crunch. We can always relearn Aerial Ace by TM as well. Like, Aerial Ace is still really, really good, especially with Celeste having a, uh, a Breloom floating around in the mix. Um, I definitely don't want to discount that. But... Uh, we can, li like, Aerial Ace is the TM. We can relearn it right now. It's not a big deal. All right, let's, uh, let's put Peanut out front. Let's go back and, uh, say farewell to our, our good boy, Baloney. This week has been really rough. Like, I oh my god. I can't believe we've only lost two <laughs> with how hard this fucking cave is going. Well, ironically, we brought Maloney in on the off chance that we needed strength. So far, we haven't. I'm going to assume that we don't. Uh, Baloney, rest in peace, my friend. You did me proud. We're going to go ahead. I I felt multiple times like we would have been in much better shape with Pumpkin Spice in the mix. So we're going to bring Pumpkin Spice into the goddamn mix. really just I I really enjoy the fucking caves man the, the caves in in black and white and X and Y in particular are absolutely on point like across the board there's my super repels there we go they're extremely good despite the kicking of my particular ass that they are doing right this very moment I like them a lot Never went that way, actually, because I thought it was the way forward, and it super wasn't. I just realized that. Well, good. We may have we may have lost Baloney, but at least we got an ice heal in the mix. I also just did the thing where I forget I can go diagonal, so I go the wrong way. Ha ha! Oh no! Dark days in the kingdom. I promise you, I am smarter than this puzzle for children. 
Oh, motherfucker. Maybe I'm not. I'm, I might have just told a lie. I might not be smarter than this puzzle for children. I've done it like f multiple times already. What the fuck? Oh, because I'm trying to be fancy instead of just actually doing it right. Yeah, that'll that'll happen, I guess. Okay. I now don't have a surf, though. So if there are any other places where I can surf in a different direction and get something dope, I don't have a surf boy with me. And that's just something I have to live with. But I'll tell you what, I wouldn't have lost bologna if I'd had pumpkin spice. That's just, that's just science. That's just facts. All right, here we go. This is a hiker with a probo pass. It's likely sturdy, um, so we'll just go ahead and fake out. I don't have any fighting with me, and the only ground I have with me, I think, is on Ravioli, who really doesn't need to eat the EXP. Um, we'll just go ahead and, and neutral Thunderbolt here. Oh god, that did nothing. I mean, he's not exactly, like, doing gangbusters back to us, but... Fuck. Probo's so fat. We got the para off. Uh, Probo's already super slow, but... Let's go. Good job, Peanut, my stalwart friend. Who never dies tragically at the hands of a hiker. Not even one time. I probably shouldn't have said those words in that order, huh? Yeah, well, it's gonna be what it's gonna be, I guess. Got a girder. That's actually really, really good news for Peanut. Level 46 is not as great. But it's fine. Oh, we crit. We melted that boy's brain, made it slide out of his ear holes. Oh, I think that's the end. Okay. Let's make sure we fully explore this room first, then. Oh no! Almost! Okay, there we go. We got it. There's an ether. Alright, we take those, I guess. we go. Sometimes it's hard to get it to even register that you're moving diagonal. Okay, we got a Metacham. This actually isn't bad because we hit it neutrally for, with Psychic and it we resist its fighting. And we always have to respect the Metacham, but... A shadow Ball, but it's all from its very weak special side, and it's not uh, Stab. Yeah, we're fine. Let's go. Got an 
elixir. Let's go. Um, I guess we'll find out what's that way in a sec. Was I wrong? Was I not at the end before? I thought I was. This must all be side areas, right? It's just so foreign when compared to the modern Pokemon games, just the concept of having side areas in a game. Yeah, this is a side area. There's a TM. I'm pretty sure it's the Frost Breath TM, which is a little disappointing for how much of a pain in the dick it is to get to it. Yep. But, you know, sometimes it'd be like that. There we go. Did I already fight this asshole? Yeah, I did. Cool. Alright, we're gonna lead with Claude for the next bit, because I feel like Dark Poison is a really good typing to take basically anything these assholes are likely to have. It's really cold in here, isn't it, ass butt? Is there something going on up ahead? This Obama snow is a fine specimen. It's absolutely brimming with energy. The more we agitate it, the stronger its snow warning ability becomes, making the snow fall even more furiously. Let's catch it swiftly and get out of here. Snow. Hey. Hey, you Pokeball thieves, what are you doing here? What does it look like? We're catching Pokemon. Why else would we have grabbed all those Pokeballs? It's so we could catch powerful Pokemon like this Obama Snow. It's full of potent energy. Energy? You're not the brightest one, are you? Whoever has the most Pokemon and the most energy will come out on top. Lazy people who just wait for things to be handed to them don't get to have these resources. But why is Team Flare amassing Pokemon energy and money? To put it another way, why is Team Flare always trying to take everything for itself? Allow me to spell it out for you. It's so Team Flair, and only Team Flair can survive. After all, why should we care about saving people who aren't on our side? Anyway, I don't mind a healthy curiosity, but I'm afraid I just don't have any more time for you. Ass butt. They say only Team Flair will survive? These people have a few screws loose. You two, hurry up and send these kids packing. Yes, ma'am, right away. Let's go, Team Flair. This is the trademark pose of Team Flair. It is the very definition of fashionable. Fucking nerds. That's a gold bat, uh, which ironically is like one of the few things that uh, we were much better suited to take on with uh, with the cat. But sometimes it works. we can still light this bat on fire. Didn't do a ton, but it's going to do nothing to us with poison fang. Get it one more again. Oh god, if we'd gotten the burn and the burn had ticked on it, that would have been fucking sick. Just fucking dunk on him. No such luck. Okay, we got a Manectric here. Which, god, I would love to just send out my shiny new Garchomp, but uh... We gotta, we gotta protect that boy's levels. At least I am, I'm pretty sure he's at level limit. I haven't looked at anything in like a week. Let me, let me confirm. Level 1 of 48. Yep. So we are at limit with both of our shinies, which is not a wonderful position to be in, certainly. The Team Flare scientists are really fucking... 
like like no shade. They are rad as hell. Also, Dark Fire is a fucking problem. Um, we're just gonna Toxic this turn. And I'm gonna play it safe here. There's no real reason not to. We'll go ahead and protect and get a turn of recovery, get a turn of toxic damage. We'll go for a Venom Shock next turn. Again, this this Team Flare Scientist would be a real problem if she had literally more than a single Pokemon. Um, but I'm not gonna keep beating that particular nail into the ground. But like, yeah, like the the boss battles are so disappointing in this game for the most part, with with one like obvious uh, and glaring exception, and that's really just the problem with this game. Snow. So we got the Abomasite. Um, again, we're not going to use it unless we hatch a Snover holding its own Abomasite out of an egg. Um, it's part of our part of our rule set here. Um, but still, kind of cool. It's also a really easy Megastone to miss during gameplay if you don't know it's there. Um, so, you know, if you're playing X and Y along and you never knew that that was there, then I hope that you were paying attention and I hope you snag it. Because um, honestly, I think Mega Obama Snow is a, a cool and really underrated Mega, um, particularly like for uh, a playthrough. And like that is for me, I think easily like the most frustrating like gameplay decision they made with X and Y is because Megas are such a cool like playthrough feature. Like, like, they're treated as this like big like post game like competitive thing and like in competitive you're only ever going to use like the two or three like best most competitive megas holy shit that sky looks fucking amazing and i'm pretty sure as i was yeah there's a spot maybe no it's not a spot because i ran over it multiple times but uh, every now and again a shooting star goes by that's pretty fucking dope um but yeah you're never really going to use anything but the best megas <clears throat> in gameplay for, for, for Aaron in, uh, in competitive for what you're doing. Like, like obviously like Smogon's tears are an unofficial construct, mind you, but they give some like value to a lot of megas that would never see play otherwise. Um, but like generally like, you know, megas are already like a really small subset of Pokemon and there's only a really small subset of Pokemon of megas, uh, that are going to be like viable in any given competitive format. And like that really sucks. I I don't I don't love it. All right, we are gonna be heading into another route with sky battles, so we need to bring some of our flying boys with us for this particular challenge. Um, God, I'm not. I don't want to make the mistake of not having sufficient birds. Um, sufficient birds are a really important thing to have here, I think. Um, we'll leave Peanut. No, because Peanut's got so much EXP to earn, and that's good. But we've already been punished so hard for not having Pumpkin Spice with us. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Fuck it. We'll bring Peanut. If it bites me in the ass, it bites me in the ass. There we go. <sighs> All right, guys. Well, it, that cave took longer than I even expected it to. It is getting to be about YouTube o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and call the episode here. Thank you, every much, everybody, for hanging out with me today. I hope that you've enjoyed it. As always, I have been Jolly by Nature. Thank you so much for watching. See you all next time. 
Hey, what's up everybody? You made it to the end of the video. That is so awesome. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Um, be sure to click the like and subscribe buttons so you stay up to date on what I and my co-hosts are doing right here on the Blastburn Radio YouTube page. Also, be sure to check out Blastburn Radio Podcast, which is available wherever fine pods are casted, as well as at our website down below at BlastburnRadio.com. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back next time, and I hope to see you there. Take care.